All right, so here we go. This is a brand new student of the gun radio, and uh, we're going to have a bunch of a bunch of stuff today. We have actually have a special guest or guestesses. Uh, we we have Heather and Joey from Tactical Response. We're going to interview them, talk to them about what's going on, what's new, history of Tactical Response, current currently what's going on with Tactical Response. We're going to talk about the development and the production of James Jaeger's book, The Four Pillars of Fighting. Uh, what makes them different, how we actually are like-minded individuals in, in many ways, and so on and so forth. You're not going to want to miss it. Uh, Montana, the state of Montana also, and I saw there was a tag. Jared, did you see this tag that North Dakota did the same thing? Oh, no, I didn't see that. I saw a tag where North Dakota basically did the same thing as Montana. I can't believe that that... Montana beat South Dakota to the punch, or maybe South Dakota already has something in the works. I don't know. Uh, we're going to talk about them, talk about the big sky country there. Uh, of course, we have a Duracoat Finish Firearm for you guys, and uh, also uh, a Brown Oils Bullet Points. So it's going to be a good day. It's going to be a good day, Tater. Mm -hmm. Pay attention. Welcome to Student of the Gun Radio, planting freedom seeds since 2013. Here we don't just talk about guns and gear, we also discuss current events and politics. Because guns are politics. Now, sit back, relax, and allow today's episode to drift ever so gently into your ear. Please welcome your co-hosts, founder of Mastermind Media and Consulting Group, Jared Martin, and the shipping ogre, Zach Martin. Now, give it up for your beloved host, the Pimp Hand of America, Professor Paul Markle. All right, all right, all right, man. Sweet Buddha on a rubber raft. Did we have a busy week? A busy week, a busy weekend, man. Since I talked to you guys last, I have been going nonstop. Legit. Legit. I'm too legit to quit. That's right. <laughs> too legit. Too legit to quit. I got I was visited by my beautiful grandbabies. They are so adorable. Oh my goodness! There, that made that made my week. I was visited by my beautiful grandbabies, and Ruth helped me gather eggs. We went out, and we and she didn't want. Don't let them eat me. I don't want them to eat me. I don't want the chickens to eat me. <laughs> Took her into the chicken enclosure area, and and she was. But I held her little hand, and she had her little basket. And we gathered little eggs in the little. That's good. I, I snatched up one of the chickens, one of the naughty ones. The, oh, so yesterday, Jared, all right, you know the, the escape artist, Houdini? And it's yeah. the, yeah. So her and her sister were out yesterday. And I'm trying to figure out how they're getting out. I never see them get out. They jump over the fence. I don't think they do. <laughs> that fence is tall. There's no way. Yeah, I don't think they jump over that. I, I don't know what they're doing, but uh, I didn't feel like searching for holes yesterday, so I just put them back in. Well, because you know what they do. Any, any of you guys who have a, have a farm or animals or whatever, uh, most of the time when they get out, my, mom, my mom's got chickens, and she said when they get out, she said they don't go in here, so they get out, and then they realize that all the rest of them are on that one side of the fence, and they're on the other side of the fence, so they just walk around the outside of the fence. And I've also noticed that the ladies are narcs. <laughs> so I was, at, I was in the house, in the kitchen, and I hear them like, bah, 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 bah. right, you know, carrying on, and I'm like, what the heck? So I look outside, and there's Gertie on the other side of the fence. I was like, aha, <laughs> they're ratting her out. She's like, hey, they're all like, hey, alert, alert. One of the one of them has escaped. <laughs> You're like, why don't you just free range them? Yeah, I don't want to free range them because a, I don't want the neighbors getting free chickens. Um, b, they're they're chickens. They lay eggs, so I don't want to play the search the entire back forty for eggs yeah. game. Um, well, they are technically free ranged, but just within a controlled location. Yeah, they're they're not in cages or anything. They wander around and hunt and peck and stuff, but they're in a specific area. They're free range, organic, farm fresh, farm right, yeah, uh, BPA free, yeah, <laughs> BP. That's right, fair Vegan. trade, they're, yeah, fair trade. They're fair trade. That's right, dude. I'm gonna, I'm gonna. <laughs> I, was, I was thinking about getting some egg cartons that said, uh, 
like fair trade on them or whatever. Go to local farmer's market. That's right. These are fair trade. What does that mean? It means you're going to pay me $10 for <laughs> organic eggs. Yep. Uh, I actually offered some to the, uh, to the truck driver yesterday and he's, I said, do you have chickens? And he looked at me. He's like, no. I said, I'll just give you some eggs. He goes, oh, one of my, he said, one of my hands raises chickens. He said, so we're never short on eggs. I'm like, that's uh-huh. a good thing. It's a good thing. Well, then there is no pleasing you. Was he a local dude? Mm-hmm. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah, he's, he, he, he lives, he was telling me he lives in Naples. So Italy, no, Florida, Florida, Florida. Florida? No. All right. What are we going to talk about first? Let's talk about I don't think everybody knows what you're doing. Is Doug Arnold listening? He knows. Yeah. Did he just Doug say, did he, he just said. type what it was? He said, I do. Yeah. <laughs> See, the older people know Zach, you freaking Gen Z. Yeah. That was Patience by Guns N' Roses. And that is the topic of today's Duracoat Finish Firearm segment. Yeah, I love that that uh, fire extinguisher gun. Oh, it's awesome! It's Just fantastic. watching the video, and there it was. It's like, oh, it's so great. Uh, you know what we could do? It, it'd be kind of quirky, but for the fans that have been with us a long time, we could we could just uh, offer a uh, a fun shoot where they can come and shoot all of our all the guns that we made famous. That would be cool. <laughs> <laughs> over the years how many how many guns have we made famous the the, the fire extinguisher gun is the most, most famous, famous. So we and got then the, the the pimp the pimp pan high point the golden one. Oh, wait, well, yeah that's kind of eh. it, but the, the, the also the jimmy hendrix one no oh, wouldn't we, no it's the eddie van halen that one but <laughs> no, the, the snake gun oh the snake gun yes yeah, snake, snake gun, gun. The, the snake bow gun oh, oh what the other i forgot the bowcaster Oh yeah, the bow. Yeah, caster. yeah. So we, I, I, I kind of forget this, these guns that we've made famous over the years. We got the bowcaster. We've got the fire extinguisher gun. We've got the snake gun. That'd be, that'd be kind of fun. But anyway, patience. So Jared and I had the opportunity. We took the opportunity to uh, get some get some shooting in uh, this weekend. And uh, Jared was using his EDC, and I was using my EDC. I was using oh. my hashtag EDC. All of the Saigon report guns. Yeah. Well that that's that's actually that's actually coming up. We're gonna we're gonna tease you guys with that in a second. Uh, but what did we what did we discover? What did you discover about dirt coating your gun and then immediately and then not, putting it into a holster and starting to carry it? Yeah. Yeah. I, I should have carried a, a different gun for a couple of weeks while the it cured. So yes, but I yeah I I, I was not patient enough. Mm-hmm. Dura coated it, and then I put my. I thought I waited long enough, but it must have you, just been a couple you waited of days. like a day or yeah. two. Yeah. So, so here's the deal. Don't do that. Yeah, the great thing about Dura coat, especially the Canon can, is that you do not have to bake it. Because people are like, oh, what's the big deal? Just just put it in your wife's on a cookie sheet in your wife's oven and. You know, for at 200 degrees for three uh, hours or whatever, it's no big deal. I'm on a Traeger kick now. I, uh, Tra- you put it on your Traeger? Yeah, you put, you put it, it on your, your Traeger, man. You don't even have your, to listen to your wife whine anymore about put that. Put it in your you green egg. Your Traeger. So, this is how real a, gun people barbecue, okay? <laughs> you have a green egg. You can put your... Well, though the reason that we that it's a big deal that you don't have to bake it is because there's certain things that you might want a Duracoat that you don't want to put in a 250-degree oven, like a polymer frame or optics or electronics. You probably don't want to put your EOTech or your Chigicon or your ACOG. If you, you did a really nice uh, camouflage finish on your, on your ACOG, you probably don't want to put it in the oven. 
just get a gas, you know? Uh, well, if my optic can't withstand that, then I don't need to put it on my gun. That's right. If my ad scope can't withstand 250 degrees, then I won't buy it. Yeah, like, I might. I might be somewhere in real life that I have to. Yeah, what if you're in the desert and environment? It's, what if you're on Tatooine and it's 250 under the dual suns and you? <laughs> so that that is for those of you that don't know. A lot of people are like, oh, just get the just get Brand X and you bake it and it's good to go. And you're like, yeah, but there's some things you might want to coat that you can't bake. Yeah, I actually, Jared, I actually experienced that. Um, Yet many long, long years ago, way before uh, Duracoat was a sponsor and way before the Canon Can technology, I had a uh, a custom rifle company, a precision rifle company, making up essentially what was the equivalent of an M40. Uh, they they were doing uh, kind of a shot for shot remake of the Marine Corps M40, and they're going to put a scope on it. And he said, "I want." I said, can you match the scope color to the barrel? Because it was going to be a uh, kind of a, uh, out, like a military olive drab forest green kind of a color. And he said, well, here's the deal. He said, we have to we um, oven dry the parts, and we cannot oven dry a, uh, a scope, obviously. We don't want to put your scope into an oven. I said, yeah, that's probably a great idea. He said, so we'll coat it, but I can't guarantee that it'll – stick right because we can't bake it i said all right that's cool so here's the deal with uh with duracoat is you don't have to bake it however caveat asterisk you need to have patience you need to prep and you need to say to yourself okay can i set this thing aside for 14 days and leave it alone If you can't, then don't do it. Uh, but if you, you need to do that, so whether it's a scope, whether it's a Glock, whether it's a polymer frame gun, whether it's a steel gun, whether it's a whatever, uh, patience. So you can do really good stuff yourself uh, in your own garage or workshop or whatever, but you need to have patience. So hence... Yeah, mm -hmm. there you go. Patience. That is a virtue, and that's what you need to have, and that is the lesson for today. And uh, what you should do uh, is you should go over, you should click the link, studentofthegun.com slash Duracoat, and go to their website and become a Duracoat firearm finisher. That would be cool. Cool. All right, you guys got anything to talk about today? Uh, do, 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 do. Yes, I would like to talk about the review of the week. Yes. If you'd like to have your review read right here on this show, just go to any of our platforms where you can review. Um, iTunes allows it. The Discord obviously allows it. Studentofthegun.com slash Discord. There's actually a public review channel that you can access if you're not a grad program member. But if you are a grad program member, you get access to the entire server, and that includes a private review section. So you can get a little bit more intimate there if you'd like. Uh, iTunes, Podbean, and Refonic are also places where you can leave the review. And this one is from Drew Ranella. says, this is the best firearms-related podcast. Don't waste your time with all the others out there. Well, thanks, Drew. Well, there you go. Yeah, thanks. Man. And I agree. I agree I've got some that. friends that I don't want to poop upon. So, so Well, you know, it, it, I didn't say it. Drew said it. Right, yeah. I just agreed with him. Yep. <laughs> uh, have you have you noticed that uh firearms related web pages have changed their opening page to the click to prove you're 18 or older thing? oh yeah I, i've noticed that that uh they've just started doing like they've I, for instance i high point firearms do that does that now they didn't now they do ds arms i was on ds arms web page yesterday they, they modified their thing is that a it, did something happen and, and now all the are, are we trying to 
please Google. We're trying to make Google like us by modifying our pages. No idea. Because it's a, it, all of a sudden it's a thing. Um, we don't sell firearms, so I'm not privy to right what's going on there. Yeah, probably just all the, a layer of protection. But is it really? That's is it like getting a letter from the ATF? Yeah, it could could be. Yeah, it's like well, if we do this, then then the 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 Nazis, the scumbags, the communists in California in Silicon Valley, then they'll like us and they won't throttle us. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's it. If we do this, then the then the uh, the this communist, the scumbags, you know, they in at Instagram and Facebook and YouTube, they'll they'll start liking us. Well, and now it's not even a conspiracy theory anymore because no, it's proven. Yeah, Elon Musk came out and said that he found the the algorithm that was code. trained to ignore certain words like such as suck and things like that. So if you can add a word in there. Mm -hmm. Who knows what words were in there? Oh yeah, it was it was like two thousand words had been programmed into the algorithm to uh, if you posted and you use any of those words, it would throttle, ignore your post. Wouldn't remove it, just make it so nobody else could see it. That that was the that was the dirty little the little trick that there's like people are like oh we're not censoring anyone. Your post is still there. See, yeah, but it. I have 10,000 people following me and 200 people saw that post. How does that make any sense? It's not our fault that, that your followers aren't seeing your posts. Really? Okay. So there you go. Uh, <laughs> that's so cute. It's so cute. I'm on the, uh, the High Point Firearms website, and they have the, uh, the 40 and 45 models. For the people who have not yet gotten the memorandum, uh, the 40 cal. No, oh, I think 40 is a good balance between 9 and 45. You think that? That's See, that's what we thought in 1990. <laughs> How long ago was 1990, Jared? Oh, 33 do, years. Do you realize you were born the same year as the 40 Smith & Wesson? Yeah, because all good things are born in the same year. Duh. I wouldn't I wouldn't you hit your notice? wagon to that cartridge. No, that's the best thing there is. That's the best cartridge to come out in the last the hundred years. Are the best ballistics that have John ever Moses, been released. Moses Browning, man, he's like he, he's yeah, he, he wishes JMB wishes he, that uh that he would have invented it. <laughs> he's like, No, I didn't. No, I don't. He goes he, he wouldn't have because what what John did, he was, he was a genius. He just took, he came up with a cartridge, and then when he needed another one, he just either scaled it up or scaled it down. Uh, 45 ACP. The 380 ACP is just a scaled down version uh, and of the 45, and the 32 is a scaled down version of the 380, which is a scaled down version of the... <laughs> of the 45 ACP. Do you guys know, are you aware of the fact, that, I know this is a high point, or we're talking about a high point, but whatever, we're talking about guns, that the B at 50 BMG, Browning machine gun, is really just a scaled up version of the 30-06? Mm. I'm like, no, it's not. That's your, don't even, you have no idea what you're talking about. Okay. But coincidentally, if you take the ballistic table for a mil spec for the 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 what would be the mil spec thirty out six cartridge, and then you take the fifty BMG mil spec cartridge and you compare the trajectory and the ballistics of those, and the the rainbows are basically identical. I discovered that about twenty years ago. <laughs> and you're like, oh, really, really. Uh, the dope adjustments for 30 out six and the dope adjustments for a BMG are almost identical. They're like that close to being identical. So. But anyway, I digress. I don't think that High Point is going to come out with a BMG or a 30 out six anytime in the near future. But they do have a thir they have a 30 super, 
Thanks for asking. Carbine. <laughs> if you wanted to be the first guy on your block to have a 30 Super Carbine, I, you know what? I think they're the only ones in the world actually making a 30 Super Carbine right now. I think they were the first ones to do it. So there's that. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that's funny. So what will happen is in three years, Smith & Wesson will come out. <laughs> <laughs> that's a dirty super carbine baby yeah after everyone else is 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 over it and bored with it and doesn't care anymore smith and weston will introduce one shut up that's mean you're never going to get smith to and weston to sponsor you talking like that about him oops <laughs> write that time down all right uh did you see the new video about uh the water filters the lifesaver water for purification uh, devices you didn't you did i don't know did you or didn't you uh because we actually I, uh, I did two videos uh and uh, one of them is about the five gallon jerry can that you can put in your truck or your camper or your trailer or whatever uh fill up and you got five gallons of clean water uh, which you know unless you're taking trying to take showers with it or something it should last you quite a while and and then there's the backpack version uh, which is the Wayfair? It weighs the whole entire unit weighs eleven ounces, and uh, somebody told me that that uh, that was too much. And I was like, "You are just that person." Charlie Uniform November Tango. <laughs> when you give someone something that's good, and then that's not good enough for them, and you're like, "I, I don't even," I I know you not, but yeah, both of those are on the Juxy channel. So if you would like to check those out, you are hereby invited to check those out. And if you have come to the conclusion that you and your family should indeed have clean water uh, to drink, if, if you're still not on board with the clean water thing, you're like, ah, I don't know. I'm not really convinced yet that uh, we need clean water. I don't know what to say to you. Then there is no pleasing you. <laughs> All right. New listeners, old listeners, any listeners, whatever. I'm going to be quiet, and you're going to perk up both of your ears and listen louder. Attention, new listeners. We produced a complimentary online training course called Seven Training Tips That Could Save Your Life. Get instant access by joining the Student Lounge for free at studentofthegun.com. Do you watch Student of the Gun TV, read the blog, and follow us on Facebook? If you answered no to any of these questions, you are wrong, but you can easily fix yourself. Go to studentofthegun.com to find everything SOTG. All right, there we go. Uh, <laughs> the mouse was out of the window. So take that. Or what you will, will you? <laughs> Brownells Bullet Points brought to you every week by our good friends at Brownells.com. Oh, hey, you guys. Um, you guys remember the A-R-M-E-D? Right, the uh, AR, the Armalite rifle minimum effective dose. You guys remember that? If you don't, well, I'm going to tell you about it. So last summer, do you can you believe it's already been last summer? It's time's flying, man. Holy, that yeah, was it was last summer. Yeah, and it's already June. Mm -hmm. But it still feels like spring. Farfig Newt, I know it's. It feels like spring because it was. It was forty five degrees out this morning, or forty six degrees. It was a little bit chilly. Um, but uh, last summer we did a project. It was called the ARMED. Although we might have, we might have been working on it in like September or whatever. But uh, uh, and the reason I bring this up during Brownells bullet points is because we got ninety percent of the parts from the Brownells catalog. Uh, and this weekend, we went. Jared and I went into the uh, grand opening of a new uh, shop, a new 
gun shop. Uh, it, it's a it's it's a gun shop slash manufacturer. So it's kind of unique. They don't just sell guns; they actually make guns. They're manufacturers. It's called Iron Horse Firearms, right, Jared? Mm-hmm. Iron Horse Firearms. Yep. And it's in it's in lovely Vernal, Utah. Vernal meaning renewal or springtime, or Vernal Equinox. Spring Equinox is renewal. So uh, Vernal, Utah. Anyway, but uh, one of the reason I bring it up is they actually had some rifles, a couple of rifles that they had built on. The KE Arms unibody lowers. You're like, oh, I know that because Brownells has those. Brownells introduced there with the uh, the WWSD program. You guys remember that uh, a couple of years ago? The What Would Stoner Do? Yeah, the WWSD program. I think it was WWSD 2020. It kind of... I don't know if it flew under the radar or not because there was so much going on in 2020. People were just panic buying crap and they didn't even know what they were buying. But, uh, yep. Uh, Jared, we, Jared and I, in addition to shooting our, our hashtag EDC guns, uh, also took the opportunity to take the ARMED out. And, uh, yes, the ARMED is done up in a, uh, Rhodesian baby poop camouflage. Which we did from Duracoat. You get they they don't have a they don't have a baby poop yellow because you guys didn't care enough to tell them that you wanted it. So there you go. They actually have it, but it's not called that. So you have to have to work a little harder to find it. Yeah. Uh, I think the Rhodesian colors are like a super niche audience of people. <laughs> Well, the uh, yeah, people that'll know about the Rhodesian color. And, well, what and it is is, know is why uh, the baby poop yellow is a cool color. Would it, it's it's a darn shame because people of my generation, you wouldn't have to explain it to them. Like sounds like my sounds like your generation didn't do a good enough job at passing the message. Maybe the com- the current generation is too confused and and distracted. And distracted. Yes, they're they're so distracted. They have their heads so far up their own rectums that they uh, can't pay attention to anything. So the lessons don't land. Hashtag boomer. It's it's not that. All right, I'm not a boomer. <laughs> yeah, you know, and that see that is that when when millennials and Gen Zs call people my age boomers, it just proves. How stupid they are! No, it doesn't prove anything. No, it, yes, it does. No, no it's, it's not. It's not an age thing. I'll defend this become... real quick. All right, it's not an ahead. age thing. It's it's a, it's a uh, a philosophy of life and action thing, if that makes sense. So it's not. It is an age group. It's a generation. But when young people, most of the time, when I when they say boomer, they mean that that's how they're acting as as if they were in that age range. Mm. Actually, for all right, now it's my turn. Point. You guys offered your opinion. I didn't now it's my mind. turn. So, oh, you want to offer yours? Zach? Go ahead. No, it's just slang for old person at this point. Mm-hmm. It started yeah. off as meaning literally baby boomer, but now it's just your the old. The baby boom generation, yeah, yeah, which is my mother, which is my parents. Yeah. My parents were the baby boom generation. Exactly. Yes. Your grandparents. And it annoys uh, you so it works. My generation is Generation X. Okay. Uh. You know, the uh, and the young generation, the, they, the OK Boomer thing is I don't want to think. So I'm just going to throw out that cliche, which will free me from having to open up my brain and engage in thought. So you guys can go fornicate yourselves. Oh, but I, I, thought, I digress. I always thought that was a joke. I thought OK but, Boomer was like making fun yeah, of somebody. I digress. It is uh, funny. The the ARMED is built on a KE Arms lower, which you can get from Brownells. And if you looked at that, if you saw it, if you saw the pictures on the Insta Garbage or the Fascist book or whatever, and you thought, wow, that is actually kind of cool. Maybe I could do that. Well, you can do that because they have them at brownells.com. And also, last time I checked... They had they were running a screaming deal uh on the oh yeah <laughs> they're out of stock. The the completed ones are out of stock because they were running a screaming deal on them 
And so people said, I think I will buy that. <laughs> and they bought them up. So there's that. Uh, but uh, they, they frequently run uh, deals on them. Uh, so, uh, and, and so what you get with a KE Arms unibody lower is you get, oh, shoot, it is in stock. All right. They have a stripped one, which means you have to insert your own trigger group and stuff like that. Uh, but it's the lower receiver pistol grip stock altogether, sixty nine ninety nine right now on sale at Brennells. Oh, uh, do I need to do I need to remind people how things work when we talk about them on the radio? <laughs> Here's the deal: when we mention stuff on the radio and we and we highlight things and we say that they're on sale and they're available, usually they sell out fast. So, uh, if you don't care, then just move on with your life. But don't wait two weeks and then write me a letter saying, hey, man, you said that was there, and then I went to buy it, and it was gone. Uh, that's how capitalism works. <laughs> that's how the free market works. Uh, it's kind of like, Jared, when we, when we recommend a book. <laughs> Either gone or insanely priced. Yeah, yeah. Um, like, stop blowing your own horn. I'm not blowing my horn. I'm just telling you the reality of the situation. So um, you can, if you're an American uh, living in free America, if you're a slave living in slave in a slave state, then I don't know what to tell you. Just fix your state. Uh, but uh, take the take the example of the French, for instance. Oh, speaking of which, you know, what we need to talk. I forgot about this. We need to talk about something positive from the Netherlands. Uh, and we'll, but we'll talk about it during the bonus hour. How's that sound? All right, Jared. Jared has been wheeling and dealing, and he's been wheeling and dealing, and he struck up a deal with our friends at Defiant Munitions, and now he's going to tell you all about it. Um, okay. Zach, mark the time down. Okay. I'm in the middle of reading this bill. So uh, if you could take away the promotion, that would be great. What is that? What, take it away? Dad, dad I mean, it? dad is the promoter guy. Oh, okay. What bill are you reading? Uh, I'm just clarify the bill for the Montana story that we're about to talk about. Oh, okay. All right. And we'll start up again in three, two, one. All right, so uh, what we did is uh, while you got, while you guys were not paying attention or while you were sleeping, uh, we cut a deal with our friends at Defiant Munitions. And we've been reminding you for quite some time now that when it comes to defending your life with ammunition or hunting with ammunition or basically doing real stuff, uh, if you're going to shoot cardboard and paper or steel, if you're going to shoot paper, cardboard, and steel, you obviously want to shoot the inexpensive ammunition, right? You're, you're looking for training stuff. You're looking for the uh, Winchester white box. Um, the answer is no, it's not for me uh, or whatever. But when it comes to if you're going to shoot flesh targets, um, if you're going to do something real, you want to invest in good ammunition. Um, so... One of the companies that's making good ammunition, hunting ammunition, defensive ammunition, is uh, our buddy Pete Jr. Uh, at uh, Defiant Munitions. That's defiantmunitions.com. And we, uh, well, we cut a deal with them so that you guys can get a deal. If you go to defiantmunitions.com and use the promotional code, S O T G use the promo code S O T G. Is it a 10% Jared? Yeah. If, if I'm not having, if, if you're not experiencing issues from my end, then I can, I'll just take it away now. Yeah. If you go to defiantmunitions.com, use your promo code S O T G. You can get a 10% off your entire order there, which is, that's pretty rad. It's rad. If especially if you're ordering a bunch of ammo. But go do that. You know, as Dad said, he's known Pete for 
quite a while now. So I knew him when he was a little kid. Well, right, a young yeah. man, and he was working for his dad, Pete Senior. Uh, and a few people, a few folks out there in the audience, uh, know anything about the firearms industry. Uh, Pete Pie Senior formed this little ammunition company back in the day called Corbon. You may have heard of it. Um, and uh, Pete Senior now doesn't want to make ammo anymore he's an older gentleman he's done his time and he's he's semi-retired and pete jr uh, now has his own company called defiant munitions and he's literally spent his entire life in the ammo making business so knows a little bit about making ammo so uh if you're gonna if you're gonna load up for real spend the money on good high quality ammunition uh you know if you're just going to go out and shoot cardboard or milk jugs or whatever, buy the cheapest stuff you can get. Um, well, if you're going to take a class, don't get the cheap, cheap, like cheap, cheap, cheap stuff. Because if you have ammo problems during the class, it's going to be a huge distraction for you. That was one of the recommendations that uh, James Yeager made to people. He said, people think, well, I'm just going to buy these like gun shop or gun show in a sandwich baggy reloads and take those to a training class like that is a terrible idea because you're going to have problems and you're going to and rather than learning you're going to be like yeah but that's a great opportunity to, to clear stoppages there's one thing it's one thing to clear an occasional stoppage it's another thing to be clearing stoppages every time you put a magazine into the gun uh so it, when it's time to load up for real Spend the money on good, real, no kidding ammo. And uh, if you want to pop over to Defiant Munitions, follow the link in the show notes. Use the promotional code SOTG. I mean, you're, a lot of you guys are already going to go there anyway. Now, if you use the SOTG code, uh, it supports us and it supports them. There you go. There you go. All right. It is time for me to be quiet and for Zach to uh, give you a little bit of a promo. Pay attention, please. SOTG.com is the perfect place to go if you are a student of the gun. Whether you want to expand your brain, increase your marksmanship, or help keep your family safe. All that, plus the pimp hand brands that you love. Shop SOTG.com has almost anything that an American patriot would want. Education, enlightenment, and entertainment, and we're open 24-7. Check out Shop SOTG.com today and see for yourself. Yes, indeed. And over at ShopSOTG.com, I think we need we all know what we need to talk about, which is the Patriot Fire Team Training Camp, which is going on at the end of this month. Right? The, the end of this month? Yep. Yes. June 30th. June 30th. The last, through the last of, of June and the beginning of July. Yep. Oh, up in beautiful Vernal, Utah, kind of. It's like outside of Vernal. We're not, you're not going to yeah. be... Pound, uh, We're not going to camp like, in outside town. the wingers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so head over there right now. Uh, shop SOTG.com to get in on the Pager Fire Team training camp at the end of this month. The topics will include land navigation, team tactics, field craft, communication and signaling, night operations, leadership traits, live fire rifle and handgun training, and more. Ain't that going to be fun? And again, it is a camp. As in, like, sleeping outside and cooking over a fire kind of camp. So keep that in mind. Don't don't show up expecting yes. a four-star hotel. <laughs> no, it's it's a yeah, it's it's a training camp, and that's that's you know, that's what you want to do. You want to do that. You want that experience. I promise you, you want that experience. So, and we would love for you guys to come out. And it's it's not just, but I want to stress that it's not just a camping trip. It's a training event you you will be receiving uh professional training from a uh, uh small arms and tactics instructor with 30 years of experience i don't know who that guy is but you're gonna appreciate it yes all right so that is that mr that's that it is a fantastic opportunity for you guys so uh, go to student of the gun uh we'll follow the link in the show notes just I mean, everybody's listening to this on their phone anyway, or their laptop, but probably their phone. So just open up the Maybe show the notes, click iPad. the link, sign up, and get your fanny out here, and we're going to have a good time. All right, it is time for a student of the good homeroom. We're going to talk about Montana. Montana.
All right. So, <laughs> which do you you guys remember that right? When when Cartman said Montana, yeah. Uh, was that in the movie? Was was that in the South Park movie when he Man, did I can't that? Remember, I remember. But every time I Montana. hear the word Montana or see a Montana license plate, that's what I think about. You you he invaded <laughs> my brain. <laughs> you hear Eric Cartman saying Montana. <laughs> Well, the state of Big Sky Country, uh, the state of Montana did something very, very positive, and uh, we want to make sure that you guys are aware of it. So listen up, freaks. Dateline. You're rebuilding. Yeah. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. Yeah. It says Montana bans financial institutions from imposing gun sales tracking codes. Dateline June second, twenty twenty three. This is from NTD.com. Republican Montana Governor Greg Gianforte uh, enacted a bill last week that would bar financial institutions from requiring that retailers in the state apply a special code to track firearms purchases. Last year, a committee in the International Organization for Standardization, a Switzerland-based organization that sets and monitors quality standards for a variety of industries, voted to establish a new merchant category code for firearms. The firearm-specific MCC, which is Merchant Category Code, would allow financial institutions to track gun sales separately from the general merchandise category on other retail products. So your bank would be tracking the gun sales, but the bank wouldn't turn that information and give that to anybody would they just funny i saw that bank of america voluntarily gave transactional information over to somebody some one of the agencies what you mean a private company would would give customer information to a tyrannical state voluntarily what i don't believe that i think you're just a crazy conspiracy person it's not like a mobile phone company would turn over the tracking data for a hundred million customers to the government so the government could use that information. Right? That wouldn't happen. Yeah. I don't know. And that's based upon the Bank of America thing is based upon a uh, whistleblower talking about it. And I believe that uh, one of the committees in the house is actively investigating that to figure out what actually happened. Mm. So pay attention. Yep. Um, gun rights advocates have pushed back against firearms specific MCCs and lawmakers in several states have begun pursuing legislation to block the gun purchasing tracking agenda. So <clears throat> Montana is one such state that has sought to block the firearm MCC with a state bill. The bill states that financial institutions, including banks, credit unions, online payment processors, and applications, um, cryptocurrency companies, and any other institution providing financial transaction services may not require a firearms retailer in this state to use a firearms code that is different from that of general transaction. Passed the Montana Senate passed a bill in March, followed by the state house in April, the governor signed the bill into law on May 19th. I like the quote from him. He said, gun owners should worry about what's in their wallet, not who's in their wallet. Yep. Yep. Just, yeah, the, the idea that we're living in a country right now where we have to deliberately tell outside institutions that it's none of their business what we're buying. It's none of your business. Mind your business. Yeah. This is a perfect example of why the credit card companies stopped development. Because if there's different rules, if there's no standardization between states, then it makes it a lot more difficult on their end. There's a lot more involved. So states like Montana doing this are one of the things that motivated the uh, like MasterCard, Visa, and whatnot to halt implementation. As far as we know, as far as the public knows, they've halted it. Yeah, so uh, the story says that West Virginia, Idaho, Mississippi, North Dakota, and Florida all have passed similar bills in the recent months. Where's South Dakota and Wyoming on this? Yeah, where's Utah? Come on, guys. 
Well, Utah's got too many too many yeah, California too residents. Utah's too busy uh, doing the cryptocurrency or the the central bank digital currency thing. Yeah. Uh, you know, remember we said there needs to be a lot more. Te- there needs to be more Texas in Texas. Texas needs more Texas. Utah needs more Utah. Everybody thinks Utah is this super ultra conservative, you know, like Mormon state, but it's been infiltrated by scum from California and the West Coast. We need to fight back against that. So uh, that's some good news. I thought you guys would appreciate that. We threw that in there. Man, we're already 45 minutes in, and we still have part one. Uh, we didn't know. It's kind of like uh, uh, when J.R.R. Tolkien wrote his masterpiece, The Lord of the Rings, he wrote it as one book. He didn't know it was going to be three books. And he took it to his he took it to his editor, and the editor's like, Whoa, 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 whoa. Slow down there, Mr. Write Eight Million Words. <laughs> Tell you what we're gonna do. We're gonna take this monstrous tome and we're gonna break it up into parts so people can consume it. Well, the other day, uh, we had Heather and Joey on from Tactical Response, and we said, uh, and we said, Well, how long are we gonna go? We're like, Well, we won't we're gonna Hold it at an hour. And what do we, Zach, what did we, did we stop at an hour 10? Like hour 10, so, hour 15 or so. Yeah. <laughs> so, so we just kept going. Uh, we just kept going and going and going. So here's what we're going to do for you guys, because we love you, is uh, we're going to give you today, we're going to give you part one of our interview with Heather and Joey from Tactical Response. And then a week from now, we'll give you part two. Isn't that crazy how that works out? I know it is. So uh, pay attention. Pay close attention uh, to not the man behind the curtain, but uh, to the show. And uh, the next voices you hear will be Heather and Joey, from Tactical Response, and myself and Jared. And enjoy. We'll start out and we'll let uh, Joey and or Heather just uh, for those of you that don't know, they're listening right now. Those of you that don't know what tactical response is, I'll let them give you a what, where, and how you can uh, enjoy their products that they've got. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so for everybody who doesn't know, tactical response, firearms training company here in Camden, Tennessee. Um, if you can find special operations equipment, you can find us. We're in the same same area. We call it the, the training mecca of the Southeast, right? Um, yeah, I mean, James Jager started it 26 years ago. Actually, no, it's been, it's been like 27, 20, 28, I think now. Right? <laughs> There's that calendar Sweet talk again. Buddha. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Many moons. Many moons ago. And, uh, so yeah, we're, we're just keeping the ball rolling. His mission was to train as many people as possible. And that is our, our, uh, what's it called? Mission statement. We're keeping that, we're keeping that going. And uh, so, yeah, we want yeah. to get some some firearms training here in Camden or we travel a little bit as well. But, yeah. And I mean, we're on all all the socials. You can find us on Facebook, Instagram, um, YouTube. Right. We have our own website, Tactical Response. We also have Liberty TV. But you can mm. we don't have all those restrictions that YouTube has. And so we can pretty much post whatever we want, all the gun content. And so that's pretty cool as well. It's good stuff. So she said, I'm on your website right now. Does that mean Joe's socialist on media? Fans? Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm a fan. Oh, well, you know, hang on before you bag on them. <laughs> yeah. No, um, I just, um, I was on tactilresponse.com mm-hmm. and I went to the bottom and I clicked on the YouTube icon and, and there's a little chimpanzee that pops up and says, sorry, this page is not available. Try again. Uh, well, I don't know why that. Yeah, it's, you got some yeah, stuff to fix. Yeah. Selton, yeah, you got some stuff to fix. <laughs> we are we are in the process of of updating the website, so we're not mm-hmm. so we don't look like an early two thousands website anymore. Yeah. But <laughs> yeah. yeah, you need to remove the Google Plus icon from the bottom too. <laughs> there is no. It says it, you click that. And it says Google Plus no longer exists. Yep. Um, yeah. Yeah. And and I see your Twitter was disabled as well. I'm assuming yeah, that, that that happened. I think along because like, I think James like had ten that. years ago. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. So, but any hooser, uh, the point of them is I, what I want you guys to tell the uh, listening audience for those who 
Uh, I've been living in a cave for the last 10 years or so. What makes tactical response different than the local firearms instructor dude who is only going to charge me $99 for a two day class? Mm, okay. Yeah. So start. yeah, go. Yeah, I'll do it. Um, the biggest difference and anybody, I, I would feel like anybody who's listening to this probably, probably understands what I'm about to say, but there aren't a lot of no bullshit gun fighting schools, right? There's a, there's a handful of us out there in, in the country. And so that's kind of our thing. You know, we heavy, heavy emphasis on the mindset behind carrying a gun uh, and and the responsibility that comes with that. You know, in our in fighting pistol, we talk about the, you know, of course, the gun, the gun battle, the gunfight you'll be in, the legal fight and the emotional fight that you'll be in. So we do everything that we can to get people ready to actually fight with the firearm that they're carrying. You know, um, and that's the biggest difference between us and, you know, your local, you know, range instructor that'll let you put some holes in some cardboard. Yeah. James always said that we tricked them into coming by telling them, like, you're going to shoot like 750 rounds of ammo in two days. But we say all that just to get them in the seat to hear our. (laughs) (laughs) Right. Like, that's what that's where that's where the money is, is the lecture that we have. Oh, absolutely. It's the you know, we started. You guys, I'm assuming you're aware of the of the uh, uh, what what do I call it? The Armed Living DVD. Yeah, uh, we did an Armed Living DVD before we did the radio show, and mm-hmm. the the primary purpose of that was to a answer all of the questions that we were continuously getting all the time. And it's like, well, yeah, I, I know James dealt with this. It's like, I got an idea. Rather than just answer all these questions, um, but I just produce this material and and you can mm-hmm. watch it. But it's the what we call it and i'm sure you would agree is the how lots of people can teach you how to shoot mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know um when to shoot and that's now we're whittling it down and then after that is the what now right yeah. the mm-hmm. how the when and the what now okay i know how to shoot check then i knew when to shoot check and what now and uh, you know i think many 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 <laughs> many a little commandant Lassard there. Many uh, fire people that call themselves firearms training just completely gloss over the what now. Uh, right. We've got this this uh, Bruce Willis action movie. You know the what now is roll credits. Mm-hmm. You know we yep. we say something cool to each other, we high five, and they roll credits, and and we walk off, and and it's over. No, <laughs> it's actually just started. Uh, and so the, and I, and I understand why, because it's, it's like you said, it's not cool. It's not fun. It's, it's not exciting. You know, it's not the white knight hero stuff. It's, it's the, the, the down, dirty, nasty, um, what do I have to do now? Mm-hmm. Uh, and you know, like, like Jay says, uh, he said, just cause the, the noise stopped doesn't mean the fight is over. Right. I remember one of his lectures, he's like, he's just cause the noise stops doesn't mean the fight's over. There's still lots of stuff that needs to be done. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that's what you get from a tactical response. That's what you get from the, the uh, essentially the the armed citizen. What, what do you what specifically do you call the lecture? It's not the armed citizen lecture. It's the fight lecture or mindset lecture. The mind, essentially the mindset lecture. Mm-hmm. Um, that is the most valuable thing that you'll get out of the class. And that's why we'll talk about the book here in a little bit. But that's why in the four pillars of fighting, that's mindset, tactics, skill, and gear. That's something James, he talked about and promoted for a long, long time is that if you don't have the mindset first, everything else doesn't really matter. It's immaterial. Yeah. Uh, and you guys are, are holding to, true to that foundational uh, principle, the mindset, tactic, skill, and gear. That's, uh, uh, yeah. you, you say we're, we're, you're essentially just pick, you picked up the, the, the baton and you're carrying it. Yeah, absolutely. A- absolutely. The, Without without that roadmap of the you know the mindset, tactics, skill, and gear, um, that that's every every bit of our curriculum is built around that prioritizing the the mindset set portion of it first. Mm-hmm. So, you know, we I think we get a bit of a reputation sometimes for like uh, hating on gear and stuff like that. So I have to tell people like, yeah, gear is on the list, it matters and stuff like that, but a proper mindset will make up for a lack of 
tactic skill or gear, you know, Mm. but it doesn't work in reverse. And that's where people run into the issues. You know, they're like, I'm going to buy the new whiz bank 5,000 and, and I'm set. Right. Like what what you were saying, I'm going to get my action shot, high five freeze frame, and then I'm done, you know? Um, yeah, no, that's, (laughs) that's not what we're, we're pushing, focusing on the mindset. Yeah. I was talking to one of my neighbors the other day and this, the, the guy just moved in probably two or three months ago. And it was really the first time I actually got to talk to him about things like firearms and training and whatnot. You know, we'd had, we'd had him over to do actually some scripture study where we, we cracked open the old Testament, had some tea and coffee and, and did some scripture study uh, a little while ago. And then um, that's just building a relationship, which you guys totally understand. And then uh, we were talking in my garage and he saw the safe and he's like, Oh, you're, you're a gun guy. And I was like, Oh, you know, that's, that's kind of what I do. So, now it's my so we got into the, the training conversation and he's like, yeah, I've, I've bought a gun, you know, a few years ago, but I just don't think that, you know, I don't carry it. Cause I don't think I have the mindset where I could actually mm. like shoot a person. And I was like, man, you got four kids. What would you do to protect them? And he's like, that's a good point. Mm-hmm. You know? And he's like, I'm, you know, in that situation, maybe I would have the mindset where I could do that. I'm like, well, then you also need to have the, the tactic skill and gear to do so. Right. But that, that was an important distinction for him where he's like, I don't know if I could, you know, make myself do that. And I'm like, well, there, you're not making yourself do it. They're making you do it. First of all. And second of all, it, I, I, now that I have kids, it's like, you know, I've always had the mindset for um, self-defense and defending the innocent. And of course myself and my family, but now that I have kids, it's like a whole new level, which, which you guys understand. Um, yeah. But I thought that was an interesting thing, you know, for you listeners, if you talk to somebody that has kids, it's like, oh, I'm kind of on the, you know, the mindset line. They're walking that tightrope. Like, I don't think I can do that. Like, well, what would you do to protect your children? And that kind of shoves them over the edge there. And they're like, oh, you know, maybe I probably would do that for my kids. And then that's kind of the, the tripwire. And then he's like, well, can we go to the range sometime? And I'm like, yeah, no. absolutely. Let's do it. Uh, the more neighbors you... I have that are armed and uh, good with the guns, the better it'll be. <laughs> yeah. I, what gets me about that conversation is where I would have like, blown the whistle, <laughs> grabbed out the yellow flag and thrown it is, did you just say maybe? Maybe what? No, you said you're, you're, he, you said, well, you have four kids, you know, what would you do? And he said, well, maybe in that case, if well, he actually said the word, yeah. well, you know, but the thing is there are people out there mm-hmm. that would yeah. say, oh, yeah, well, sure. maybe in that case, like, whoa, 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 <laughs> flag on the field. Yeah. Did you just say maybe if I'm put in that position? Yeah. Like well, you if, have to you have to put yourself it, in their position, right? Um if if you think that like somebody that is that may or may not have the mindset for self-defense and they've come to the realization that they probably do and they're they're actually willing to do something they didn't think they were willing to do, then it's probably going to be a slow process for them to admit it's like you and I, it's different for us because we've been doing this for a long time and, and you guys have been shooting guns and teaching about mindset and, and you're proficient in the mindset, the tactics, the skill and the gear portion of it. Um, this is, it's kind of a philosophical discussion because if you look back at, at Plato and Cicero and Socrates, they also said these same things. It's like, why similar things to what we're talking about now? It's like, why would you, why wouldn't you, what? Language right, is think, important. You know? Language yeah. is important. And, and that's sure. something that where we're James and I were, we were right there. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, in, in the, in the use of language. And, mm-hmm. and when people, people use, people throw excuse words into their discussion or, or they, or they give themselves, you know, it's, it's the, the enchila mentality. Mm-hmm. Uh, and for those of you that don't know what the enchila mentality is, go find your local, go to Seven Eleven and ask them what that means. Oh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> hey, that was it, it's it ain't racist if it's true. All right, so <laughs> shut up. Uh, but but the the well, if I have to, or and we talked about this at length about I don't know a few months ago. Did you guys? I told I've been every once in a while. I I give Kayla a reading list. I give a recommended mm. reading, and, and uh, I'll tell her I was like, all of your instructors need to read this book uh did you get a hold of the the 19 the fbi 
Miami shootout by Ed Morales. Yes. Yeah, yeah that James was. That. Yeah, whenever I started the uh, instructing, James had me read read that one. Okay. Yeah. Very yeah. very good book. That yeah. Really yeah. One of the one of the the biggest takeaways. I mean, there's a bunch of other stuff. There's like we we were here and they shot and we did this and so forth. But right. the biggest takeaways from, is from the very end, and Ed. When he went to the police or the FBI academy to teach the uh, the modern secret police how to uh, spy on American citizens and rig elections, no, he didn't do that. No. <laughs> he actually he actually retired a long time ago, so I'm sure he's glad to be out of it. But when he was teaching them, he said, "You need to." And he was big on Ed was big on mindset after uh, April 11th. Uh, you know, or was it 19th? Was it April? No, April 11th. Yeah, it was April 11th, 1986. After that, he was really big on mindset and right. by getting your head right. And he said, where we deceive ourselves is that we go to training and we do things and then we, we use the word if. Mm -hmm. We say, well, you know, if I ever have to, if I'm ever in a situation then I probably will, or I feel like I will, or whatever. And he said, you need to stop right now, this day, at this moment, when he would give his lecture, it's kind of like a James, you know, he would, he goes, we're going to go out, we're going to shooty, shoot, shoot, we're going to do all this stuff, but you need to change your mindset from the word if to the word when. Mm -hmm. Because if is an inshallah, if gives you an out, and what if, Anything gets under my freak, a bird gets under my saddle. It's people who are supposed to be defensive tactics or firearms instructors or whatever. I, I really, quite frankly, hate the term firearms instructor now because there are so many charlatans out there that wrap themselves in that moniker. And mm -hmm. I, I prefer small arms and tactics instructor because I was one and yeah. are one. But uh, when when firearms instructors get up in front of a class and they say, Derp, derp, derp. And we all hope that you will never have to use any of this information skill. I mean, we hope you'll never, ever, ever have to use this. Okay. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? What does that mean? You hope. Then why are we here? Right. Like, like, well, no, no. And, and it's, it's the mealy mouthed reasonable list uh inshallah you know let me give myself an out stop it stop it right now first of all it's nonsensical that's like saying that's like gm saying we really hope that you'll never need a seat belt <laughs> right but we put them in the car just in case no, it's, I really hope I never have the need this fire extinguisher, but I have it. It's like, just eliminate the nonsense and get your mind right and decide, look, I'm going to do what is right. I'm going to learn how to do what is right. And I'm going to prepare myself to do what is right and correct, regardless of the actions, behaviors, or whatever of people around me. But when we say, well, if you ever have to, or, and why, why is if a bad word? Because not tactics, not skill, not gear, mindset. Mm -hmm. Because if you plant the word if, or we hope we never have to, or whatever, if you plant that in your mind, the day that your wife says, oh, crap, we're out of, will you please run to the store real quick and get it? And you say, okay, you've been ready to walk out of your house. You grab the keys. You're in flip-flops, shorts, and a T-shirt. All of your cool guy ninja gear is on the dresser. And when you have if in your brain, yep. you say, well, I'm, I'm just going to run to the store. I'll be gone 15 minutes, 20 max. I'm not going to need my gun, my knife, my flashlight, my tourniquet, my, my medical kit. I won't need that because... And that is exactly when you're going to need it mm -hmm. because yeah. you're not going to get a postcard from the world saying, P.S. Today at 1047 a.m., you will be called upon to either save a life or lose a life.
That's the reality of it. And when you play the if game, when you play the I hope game, or when you play that, then what you're doing is you're, you're deceiving yourself and you're giving yourself that inshallah, you know, all right, should I explain inshallah? Or do you think the you audience said it like is like thirty times? So I'd say yes. Explain. Yeah. <laughs> that the, all right, Zach. What does enchilada mean? I don't know. Please explain it. But God For real? it. Yeah. So uh, over in over in the sandbox, in the great big sandbox on the other side of the world, um, there's a whole bunch of homeboys over there, and they've given themselves this out. Right. The it, when when they you say okay tomorrow at nine a.m. Everyone needs to be here. We're doing training. Training begins at zero nine hundred. Blah 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 blah. And they're like, and you do you understand? They're like, ah, inshallah, uh, and and they throw it off. They're like, well, if Allah wills it, I will be there. And so if they show up at nine thirty or nine forty five, or they don't show up at all, then their excuse is Allah did not will it to happen. So it's it's not me. It, it's I you inshallah is a bull crap out right it is a it is cultural bull crap and if you talk to anybody over there they they want to be intellectually honest with you they're like oh yeah i know and uh when i was over in the sandbox uh i can't remember who it was it was it was a dude and he was a good dude and he spoke english and everything and uh when when people would say oh da, 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 you know I'll, I'll get that done for you inshallah and 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 he said fries are done and he said, uh, he said, he goes, oh, shala on. And I was like, oh, really? He goes, he goes, what that means is, oh, he will. Mm. When so with some, and, and that's, I mean, I might be just saying it a little bit wrong, but I mean, it's been 30 years since I was playing in the sandbox. Um, but uh, people were like, oh, you know, da, 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 and shala. And he's like, ah, shala on. Meaning, oh, he will. Oh, right. <laughs> oh, he will. So I, I don't want to hear this, this. You know, if God wills it, you know, uh, if Allah means it's okay. If I don't show up or I don't get it done, it's because Allah didn't want it to get done. Blah, 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 blah. No. And that mentality is the if, the I hope, the, well, you know, I've been, I've been carrying a gun for years now and I haven't needed it yet, so just leave it home. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. uh, I've been carrying a, a medical kit and I haven't needed it. And so just, eh, I probably won't need it. No, the moment you say, I probably won't need it, you're going to need it. Mm -hmm. And yeah. we just, Jared, Jared and Zachary actually just uh, assembled. We had, uh, and I know you guys, you guys have got our record beat. I talked to, to Kayla and she's like, <laughs> you, you guys had somebody do immediate action medical and then on the drive home yeah. had to save somebody's life. So you yeah. got us beat. Uh, we've been teaching the Beyond the Boo Boo, Beyond the Band Aid class for about ten years, and the fastest one we had was last summer. It was less than two weeks. Mm -hmm. A mm -hmm. guy had to save another dude's life with a tourniquet. Yeah. So, and it was crazy because they were both students in our class. Both were in the the victim <laughs> and, the, oh, wow. and the and the rescuer were in the class. Yeah. So the victim knew. He's like, oh, I definitely need a tourniquet. Yeah. And, and, and he and because he told the guy, get a tourniquet. Yeah, and he's like, "All right," and so he ran to his car. And the crazy thing, and I didn't realize this, I, I kind of had forgotten, Jared, until I watched it, was mindset. So the the guy, his name was Brad, the one who saved Brian's life. He said that morning, he said when I was getting ready to leave the house, my med kit wasn't in the car. He said, but I went back in and got it and put it I, in the car. Yeah. Two hours later. He was called upon to save someone's life. And if he wouldn't have done that, he'd have been just like grabbing and squeezing and holding. And it was it was a brachial artery that was up and through the arm. And and they were trying to pinch it. And, and blood is slimy. Yep. And yeah. they couldn't make it stop. Mm. Yeah, that whole we we definitely stress the importance of of carrying your stuff. Right. What Whatever that is, because much like you're saying, you know, it's taking the chance of hope, right? Like you don't want to try to win a gunfight with hope, <laughs> you know, right? Like yeah. you don't want to try to save someone's life with just hope or stop a, 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 a arterial bleed with, with it's not going to work, right? Yeah. For you to be any use to yourself or the people around you, you have to have it with you. 
Yeah. You know, it does does no good to walk out the door. Oh, it's just Walmart. I'm just gonna go grab milk or whatever, right? Not this mm-hmm. close to Arbor Day, you know. Like, <laughs> like that sounds like some. <laughs> Is that a Jay or a Tim? That's from Jay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's Arbor Day. I'm sure I'm not gonna need my gun. Right. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> James always said, like, you know, you don't get to pick the worst day of your life. Like, if you nope. knew you were going to be in a gunfight, then you would probably have your rifle, right? Okay. Like, you, or you wouldn't go there. Yeah, yeah. right. Or you just wouldn't go there. <laughs> and so, uh, but you don't get to pick whenever it happens. No. Nope. No, no. And that, that above all is something that is so often overlooked by the MIC Training Academy, you know? Mm-hmm. Oh, uh, we're going to teach you how to, you know, work on your split times and, and, you know, you know, beep, you know, yeah. or, or the shooting robot thing where they're like shooters on the line, make ready, stand by ready on the left, ready on yeah. the right. Are all shooters ready? Yes, we're freaking ready. <laughs> I've never that drives that. me. I came up to this line ready. <laughs> like, dude, I had a loaded gun on me when I showed up this morning. For what are you talking about? Right. <laughs> we we were recently at a class where they got they're like, okay, shooters, make ready. And I'm like, so I'm just like, oh, I don't know. I got a loaded gun on me. I have like all day, every day since I put my <laughs> pants on. So, what else do you want me to do, homeboy? Hmm. You know, is everyone ready? Well, if we're not, let's just just say go. You know, right. just say go. You know, just say you know, let's get yeah. it on or whatever. You know, yeah, Are you that's ready? a teaching but, moment right there. Yeah, <laughs> you know, it, it's uh, <laughs> some. It was I was talking to Jay, and, and he was he was talking about to talk. He was he was at this place where uh, there were ninjas and. There was the only ninja that was actually wearing a gun was the dude who was was uh, uh, running the the weed eater out in the. Oh in the yeah, telling that story. Yeah, the 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 ninja the the combat ninja instructors, none of them had guns on. He's like, "What's wrong with this picture here?" Right. He said, "Dude, I'm gonna go out and get the the guy mowing the lawn." And, him and I are going to get it on. He's like, these, these, these uh, super cool, like ninja guys over here. They're, they don't have their, their, uh, salient arms, $3,000 Trigicon optic. To, Cause that's, I don't know where it is. It's in the safe or something, man. Like, mm-hmm. they, they don't want to get dust on it. <laughs> so, safe where it belongs. Well, it's, it's got a bunch of holes cut in, carved into the slide. So if you carry it and use it, it gets dust in it. And then, you know, you have to clean it out and stuff. So. Yeah. Can't have that. Uh, if you guys are worried about dropping your gun, go take a tactical response fighting pistol class, and they'll help you get over that. Get over the worry. Yep. Get over the worry of scratching your your favorite gun. They'll, oh, they'll sweet boot on a rubber raft. Yeah. <laughs> so that's talk about separating the wheat from the chaff. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's always it's how many always times good, do you get fun. people in class that are like, I don't, I don't want to. I've only ever had one one issue with a, with a student and, and credits to the student. He, he gave in, but it was just, you know, he had his, his, his race gun and stuff like that. Yeah. And, uh, and he was like, man, I don't want to do it. And I, I just tapped him on the shoulder and I said, you're going to have to open those hands, man. <laughs> and he just looked at me and went, <sighs> <laughs> well, you know, it, we we James and I talked about that actually. It was uh, Jared. You did you go to a class with me, circa like oh mm, eight oh nine, and and it was it was in the donut shop. It was the donut shop classroom. You guys remember the classroom that was next to the donut shop? Mm-hmm. Heather, you remember? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. remember. It was in the donut shop classroom, or the one that's next door to the donut shop. Mm-hmm. Um, I've been to all of them since um, since the the red building. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I don't know if the donut shop was one of those. So, you, Jared, did you you were you ever in the the SOE compound building? Yeah. Yeah. The, you were in that wait, one. Wait, hold on. Is that's that the, the red, red one? one? Yeah, mm-hmm. that's the red one. Yeah. Yeah, I was in there. Wow. All right. Yeah, because when I first my first class was was at, in that old red building on the outskirts of town. Yeah. Um, but anyway, so it it was in the it was in the donut shop one where. Uh, James, he had, he had the red Glock mm-hmm. and, and he was doing a demo, 
Um, and he, he said, he goes, it's to the point now where, where I've got the rep for dropping or throwing the gun. And uh, he said, I got to get it out of the way. He said, because everyone's just sitting there staring and they're not listening to me and they're waiting yeah, I was there for that, for the gun to come out. Oh, yeah. And he said, so I was like, all right, everybody wants to see me do this. He pulls it out and he's like, Whew, and he tosses it across the room. He's like, all right, that now that we got that out of the way, um, now that we got that out of the way, let's go ahead and, and move on. You know, mm-hmm. and people are like, oh, well, what if you, what if you break the front sight off? I'm like, you know how easy it is to change sights yeah. on, on, a, on a Glock. It's like, like a five-year-old could replace sights mm-hmm. on a Glock, especially a front sight. The yeah. backside is probably not going to break off. Now, the old backsides, here's here's one for you guys. You guys don't remember this because this is circa 1991, circa 1992. <laughs> so uh, when when Glock used to have three guns in their brochure, and it wasn't a catalog, it was a brochure, they had a 19, a 17, and a 17L, and that was it. And uh, they that's when they... they, they because America, they decided they had to do adjustable rear sights. These mm-hmm. micro adjustable, you had to get a little tiny baby screwdriver and you could, you know, left and right and stuff like that. Uh, but the problem with them was they were so fragile. Mm-hmm. They're, they're super fragile because uh, they the back of the sight stuck out all the way back and it was like flush with the back of the slide almost. So I was cleaning uh, my 17 that I bought from a dude and, and probably for like $419 back then new. And uh, I had it disassembled and I had the slide sitting on the edge of the desk and it fell off and it fell perfectly right onto the rear sight and it went boop and just popped right off. No way. Yeah. Right. Just phew, popped right off. You can do that again and, if you tried. And uh, they were made of plastic and, I felt like, wow, I was the biggest idiot on planet Earth, yeah. right? And, and, and of course, back then, I, I, you know, I, was like, I have no idea what to do or how to, you know, I was 26 years old or something like that. And, and I, I contacted them. I called because there was a phone number. <laughs> on the brochure, <laughs> they had a phone number. Uh, and I called and I said, hey, this is what happened. And they're like, oh, no problem. Do you, you want a, you want a, a adjustable one or do you want like a, just a fixed one? And, and it's really easy to replace. You just tap it in. And I said, oh, well, a fixed one. And they're like, cool, what's your address? And they put a little plastic rear Glock sight with the white U in an envelope. And they mailed it to me. <laughs> <laughs> they mailed it to me. And, uh, and I, I tapped it in there with, I don't know, a, a, like a small little tack hammer and screwdriver or something. But uh, that was my first experience with that. And they very soon thereafter, I, and later years later, I was talking to somebody at Glock and they're like, Oh yeah, those were terrible. He said, <laughs> he, he said the, the number of calls we got from people are like, Hey, I broke the site off on that. Uh, they're, they're like, so they, they eventually they got enough there. Like, we just need to go ahead and discontinue that because mm-hmm. that's a bad idea. Yeah. But the, the thing is it's America's fault. Because American shooters are at, were absolutely convinced that you had to have adjustable, you know, micrometer adjustable rear sights, you know, a, an eighth of an inch. You need to be able to adjust the impact one sixteenth of an inch per click. You know, <laughs> so like, just get over yourself. We don't, we don't need that. Uh, we're good without it. But uh, uh, and and you know, bless their hearts. I'm really glad that they still put plastic sights on Glocks because it helps us sell night vision accurate sights available from nightvision.com the greatest tritium you're ever going to buy the top of the line tritium there you go Jared what do you have to say oh I was just going to get the book it's behind me real quick I want to talk about the the four pillars of fighting and and, uh, the, the process that you guys went through to make this thing a reality, because I know it was not a small undertaking for anybody involved. So I want to, I want to hear and kind of give the listeners as much of an insight into that as you can, and you're willing to. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So James had been working on that for a really long time. And whenever he was kind of getting pretty sick there towards the end, 
uh, we were trying to work around that because he got pretty weak. So he went from typing to he was kind of losing some dexterity in his fingers. So then we had a friend of his named Drew fly in and he was able to get some of it done by he would speak and Drew actually would type for him. Uh, but by that point, his vocal cords were pretty strained and it was even hard for him to talk for a long duration. And so he kept working on it when he could, but he knew he probably wasn't going to be able to finish it. So um, I know, Paul, he had asked you, you know, if if he couldn't finish it, you know, he said, let me do what I can. And he had asked you to finish it up uh, wherever he had left off. And he kind of had all these Google Docs everywhere <laughs> that he had six, been, yeah, six, yeah. six documents, <laughs> separate documents. Open. But who's counting? But who's yeah. right? <laughs> and so uh, he had asked Kayla if she would kind of get those together and send them over. And so I know like Paul put in a ton of work and made that a reality. And that mm-hmm. was awesome. And then we had Zane DeGain who uh, we kind of gave him what our idea was for mm-hmm. the for the cover. He drew up a couple different ones and we all got to kind of vote on which one we thought was the best. And he just did an absolutely just phenomenal job on that cover. And uh, I know like the first time that we got to read it through, I think we read it in, like, what, two days or mm-hmm. something crazy. Like, you know, we read it and I was like, oh, that's great. And then we started editing it. Sorry, my watch is loud. I'm so sorry. <laughs> no, uh, we started kind of editing it, and that was a little tough because we had already read it so many times that I it's, was like, "It's hard." Was this a repeat, or is this me just remembering it because we've already read it? And we kind of broke it up amongst each other, and we each took a section and you know did the editing on it, and we would send all that over to Paul, and he was really the mastermind behind helping us. How many? How many? Pa- how many full top to bottom pages of edits did you send me, Heather? Oh, I don't actually. I don't even know. It was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so that, that was actually Oxford commas and yeah. yeah. So Kayla was the one that typed all that up for us because I uh, I was at the shop and she stayed home and that was what she worked on that for like a full eight hour day. So she had like all of the different books that we had all made notes in and she compiled that all into a document that she sent to to Paul for us. <laughs> so it, it, it took me it took me four hours to go in and, and make all of the changes that, uh, uh, but yeah. I did it. I did it. Yeah. Uh, but yet it, it was, it was funny cause I was working on the beyond the, the boo-boo book. Uh, James and I were, uh, you know, that Solomon said that you should never blow your own horn. So I need to get other people to blow the damn horn for me. But uh, <laughs> 15 years ago, you know, 06, 07, James and I were in different places, but we were both telling people, you know, we were like, if, if we can teach people to carry guns and shoot people, then those same people should be taught how to save people's lives in, you know, a traumatic injury situation. We're teaching 18, 19 year old kids to go overseas and to stop gap life-saving injuries and keep their buddies from dying while they're waiting for the corpsmen and the medics to show up. If we can teach 18 and 19 year olds how to do that, why isn't the the person with the concealed carry permit being taught that? Why aren't all the moms and dads and teachers being taught that? Why is this not happening? And so he and I, you know, we, we were preaching it and we used to have we would have peer counseling sessions with each other on the phone and so forth about the pushback that we got. Mm-hmm. And what was worse was it wasn't that the outside people were doing it. It was the people in the gun community were mm-hmm. doing it. It was the fire. I had firearms instructors. There we it go. Wasn't that even the internet again. people. It was like real life people. Yeah. Like firearms mm-hmm. instructors tell me you better not do that. You can't do that. That you can't teach citizens to do that. You yeah, can't the liability teach, is the liability is too much. And and I, you know, James and I had the conversation. He's like, and he and he's like, I feel like I'm taking crazy pills. <laughs> but, and he said he put it like this. He goes, 
I teach good people to kill bad people. There is no greater liability than that on planet Earth. That's the top. Mm -hmm. Everything else falls below that. Tourniquets, decompression needles, pressure dressings, nose hoses. That is nothing compared to me going out on the range and teaching people to use a gun in the gravest extreme to kill a human being. Yep. And I had people who were firearms instructors who would go, had no problem going out on the range and with cardboard targets and ah, derp, derp, failure to stop, man. <laughs> Two to the chest and one to the face. And, derp, 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 derp. and then you say, well, you know, what about, you know, let's, we need to teach people how to use the tourniquets and stuff like that. Like, oh, you can't do that. There's way too much. You're going to get sued. Like, you're telling people to coup de gras mother mm -hmm. lovers, yeah. you know, two to the chest, one to the face, and you don't think there's any liability involved. In that. There's no there's no liability there, but if you teach someone to put a bandage on somebody else and, and they die, well, you're going you're gonna to go to jail. Uh, you're going to lose everything you have. And uh, uh, so he and I, we were, we were doing that at the same time, mm -hmm. you know. And, you know, James and I were the first instructor schools to start using the rats tourniquets. Mm -hmm. uh, and I was working on the book. I decided, you know, the boys have been trying, you know, they've been kicking me and prodding me and poking me. And like, you got to write this, you got to write this. And, yeah. and uh, so finally I assented and I was like, okay, I'm going to write this. And so as I was working on it, on it, I would send James notes. I'm like, Hey, I'm working on this. And, you know, and I, I sent him a note and I said, I want you to know, I just used the term crotchal region <laughs> in, in the book. And, and he was obviously, he responded that he was proud of me, you know? Yep. Um, and then in, it was during that conversation that he said, I got a favor to ask you. Mm -hmm. and, and he said, I'm working on this. I'm trying to get it done. I don't know if I'm going to get it done. If I can't, will you finish it? And, you know, I said, yeah, of course, you know, lump in my throat, all that. And I said, well, send me what you got. And he said, well, let me see how much more I can get done. All right, cat in the hat, and that be that Buster Rhyme. That would be it for today's episode of Student of the Gun Radio. Thank you very much for joining us. We truly appreciate it. Thank you for supporting us. Thank you for supporting those who support us. Uh, those would be our sponsors, and it does indeed matter. Uh, so, and also thank you to everybody who's already signed up. Oh, one more thing. If you have not signed up for the precision rifle class, the, that's coming up the end of July, the very last weekend of July, 2023 in beautiful Wyoming, you need to do that. Go to, uh, S O T G U that's S O T G U.com and, uh, follow the links and sign up. We would love click, click, reserve your seat. There's a button that says reserve your seat. And you can reserve your seat and get your butt into that class and experience a rifle, you know, a rifle vacation of a lifetime. We would love for you guys to do that. All right. Until we are together again, remember, you're a beginner once. You're a student for life. Thanks for staying until the end. Want to water the seeds of freedom we planted together today? Head over to wherever you listen to us and leave a like, rating, or review. It makes a big difference. Have a show topic submission? We would love to hear it. Submit it to info at studentofthegun.com. A delightful human will get back to you faster than you can finish a one-box workout. Remember to check studentofthegun.com often for new and free content, giveaways, and more. Watch, listen, read, shop, and connect at studentofthegun.com. And remember, you are a beginner once, a student for life.